All right, if I could get everyone to uh, work their way to their seats, we'll try to get started on time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Call the meeting to order. Uh, Taylor? Uh, Ross? Here. White? Here. Taylor? Here. Robinson? Here. Baxter? Here. Harris? Here. Height? Here. Witcher? Present. Quorum is present. Thank you very much. Um, Ms. White, would you like to introduce your guest? Yes, I would. Thank you. Um, I'm uh, very pleased tonight to announce that Apostle Dwayne Robinson from Change Life Ministries will be praying for us and leading the pledge. And the uh, church is located at 22nd and Willow. Glad you're here. I invite you to rise, please. Thank you. Will you bow as I pray? Dear wise and loving Father, first let me say thank you on behalf of those that have gathered here today. Thank you for your many abundant blessings that you have sent our way. Thank you for life itself and for the, a reasonable proportion of our health and our strength so that we can fulfill the mandates and callings you've placed on us. We thank you, Father, for giving us the ability to be involved in work and the betterment of this community. We thank you for freedom to embrace you and freedom to reject you. Thank you for loving us even when we did not love ourselves. The scriptures, you said the citizens ought to obey the government, uh, governing authorities since you've established those very authorities to promote peace and order and justice. Therefore, I pray for our mayor, Mayor Joe Smith, for the various levels of, six, levels of city officials, in particular those that have assembled here today. I'm asking that you would graciously grant them the wisdom to govern amid conflict and give them, a, give them a sense of welfare and true need of our people, a keen thirst for justice and righteousness and fairness, even when decisions appear difficult, allow them to lean on you for guidance and direction. Give them the confidence necessary, fitting for our city. God, I pray for the agenda tonight. Please give them the assurance of what would please you and what would benefit those that live and work around this great city of North Little Rock. I pray for all these things in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So moved. Second. On the motion. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. Witcher? Yes. Okay, how about communications? Anybody want to pull one? I'm showing only one, is that correct? How about a motion? Move to accept and file. And a second? Second. On the motion. Uh, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. Witcher? Yes. Thank you very much. We've got a special guest. Blenda Snow is here, who is the director of the North Park Housing Authority. And there's so much going on down there and so many questions that, that I couldn't answer them on. So I asked her to come and kind of give us an update on what's going on, and, and if you've got any questions, uh, she'll certainly try to stand and answer them. Blenda, Hi. thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Mayor and everyone else. Thank you for allowing me to come this afternoon uh, and share with you what's going on with the Housing Authority. Uh, the Mayor asked me if I could get this done in 10 minutes. I told him I could do it in five. So uh, I sent you some information ahead of time. Uh, <coughs> I sent it to Diane, and I think she forwarded it. But also, I brought copies of that information with me tonight, and so um, it's going to be bare bones information. Feel free to ask me any questions about anything that is not clear. Uh, what we're doing is, in a nutshell, taking our complete portfolio and trying to update and modernize the housing, our housing stock. 
uh, as you know, the house, our housing is as old as from 19, the mid-1940s, um, and the most recent one was built, which is uh, S.W. Bowker, was built in the 1980s. Silver City being the oldest uh, development, we are uh, attempting to demolish Silver, uh, Silver City and rebuild a new development on that property. Well, um, one of the things that's necessary to do that because of the way the funding works is we're pulling um, the, the developments or the transactions together in packages. And so what I'm gonna do, uh, following along with the information that you have, I'm gonna start off with what we refer to as package one or North Little Rock Rad Family Homes. Included in that package is Eastgate, Silver City, and Windermere. As you can see uh, at Eastgate, there is currently 171 units over there. We're gonna do some extreme rehabilitation and that will result in 168 units. At Silver City, it will be demolished and uh, there's currently 128 units. That will re result in 139 units. Now, as originally built, uh, City, Silver City had 147 units originally. Uh, Silver City is currently uh, vacant, completely vacant. I think the last tenant moved out this weekend. Windermere uh, is currently 75 units and it will remain 75 units uh, and that will be also a total, um, an extreme rehabilitation. Since Windermere is, um, you know, one of our better, is, in, is one of the better properties we have, you know, it, we won't have as much work done on it, but it will receive some modernization inside and some updates on the, on the outside. You'll notice the name changes for these uh, projects that we're doing, and that's because as we go through and um, bring in the different types of money, the, the way the, trans, the, way the uh, finance is, is done, you know, we already have something called Willow House. And so when we create the financing, we have to have another entity, another legal entity to actually con uh, have the financing for the money to flow through. That's just, that's a federal thing, that's a HUD thing. Um, because public housing really don't enter into these extreme uh, transactions like this. So we will name, uh, we will change the names of these uh, facilities. So Heritage House will become Hickory View um, and <coughs> it will be coupled with Bowker House as you see on the, the information that you have. Heritage House currently has 171 units. It'll have 171 units at the end. Bowker currently 74 units. It'll have 74 units at the end. Not, neither of these properties, with the exception of Bowker, will be called public housing when we're done. Uh, again, because the entity that will be created to own the properties will be, uh, it, it, it'll be something different than public housing. And so, and that's what HUD is doing, is kind of getting out of the public housing business. And they've been trying to do that uh, for many years. Uh, Maple Place, which is currently Willow House, uh, will be changed to Maple Place. It is 215 units. It will remain 215 units. Campus Towers is 71 units, and it will remain 71 units. Um, I, the, I think the, the uh, important thing is to talk about how we're, where, our, where our funding is going to come from. Um, we're going to have uh, the packages are going to include low-income housing tax credits, uh, it'll include home funds, tax exempt bonds, and something that we call a sell or take back fund, and that's just we uh, loan the project money to, to purchase the building, and then they pay, the, they pay us the money back for purchase for the uh, loan for purchasing the building. Um, and then the PHA will put some funds in uh, ourselves. You have a picture of um, some of the renderings, what it'll look like. Um, what the developments will look like when we're done. Now it's very possible some, uh, some changes will happen down the road. I think one of the concerns um, tonight is uh, public housing versus Section 8. I think that's one of the things that, that folk are concerned about. So the history on the public housing is this. You cannot borrow money uh, against the public housing property. You can't use public housing subsidies to leverage the money that we're leveraging 
to try to modernize these facilities. But for whatever reason, in their wisdom, the federal government said you can use Section 8 funds to leverage the money. I don't know why that rule was created. I just know that it was. And so in order for us to have the flexibility to leverage these funds, then we, what we uh, took advantage of this what's called RAD, you know, the Rental Assistance Demonstration Act. That's what RAD allows you to do. It allows you to come in, take your public housing developments and convert that, convert that funding source to uh, get access to money in the Section 8 pot. That is the only way that we're gonna be able to borrow this money and leverage this money to modernize these developments. And so when we're done, um, we're hopeful that we will be able to put in new elevators, put on new roofs, put in HVAC systems. We have a couple of developments where um, the tenants can't even control their own heat and air. We have a couple of developments where there is no uh, central heat and air. They're still using units and some, uh, window units and some people only have heat but don't have air conditioning. Um, we believe that it's you know, past time for them to come into this century with the amenities that they have. So we're not doing anything you know, fancy or upscale. We're just trying to raise the standard of living uh, for the people that we uh, serve right now. So the, the um, Section 8 money is a different pot of money, but the same folk are gonna live there that live there now is just that it gives us the ability to leverage the other funds that we're trying to leverage for these developments. Questions? Ms. Ross. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Ms. Snow, could you discuss, I guess, the makeup of some of these projects? I know I think of Willow House and Bowker and, and a couple of others as, you know, homes for the elderly. Uh, I have noticed in the recent years that there are other individuals living in those houses. Could you talk about that some, yes, sir. please? Yes, sir. So um, I'm going to make the assumption, I wasn't here, but I'm going to make the assumption when they built those high-rises, they were senior high-rises, and they were, uh, it had a limit uh, on the age. You know, it was, um, that's what dictated who could move in and who could not move in. In the 90s, um, for, again, the federal government decided that if a person had a disability and it did not matter the age, if they were an adult and they had a disability, that they also could live in those senior uh, developments. So that's a federal law. That wasn't a housing authority thing. That wasn't anything that we can do, could do about it then and there's nothing we could do about it now. However, um, I believe that um, some of the people that's in the current facility, that's currently in the facilities and the neighbors would be pleased to know that what we can do now that we couldn't do um, before, we can uh, create what we call a, a senior preference or an elderly preference. And what that means is uh, we have a selection plan where you've got to be 62, then you've got to be 65, then you got, you know, there are certain ages that you have to be, and it's only when you can't find anyone on your wait list that is at least 50 and older or 55 and older that you are then, you then go to those other categories. But I believe that what we're able to do, uh, when we modernize what we're able to do, is gonna be better than, uh, well, it's what people are looking for, let me put it like that. It's gonna be what folk are looking for for the uh, senior, senior homes. Mayor Mapp, yeah. will, that, will the application still be the same for East Gate and Silver City reconstituted? Will it be the same for East? Requirements, yeah. For or, East Gate or with and? the preferences. So East Gate is, is a family site. Okay. So children can live there. So that's different. Okay. Yeah. And Silver City? Silver City is a family site as well. Any, any of those that we call a family site now, they will remain family sites. All right, thank you. Thank but you. Mr. Campus Towers, Willow House, Heritage House, and Bowker House are all going to be elderly preference. We can consider all of those for the elderly preference. Okay, great. Ms. Ross, question? I guess when you said that it'll be public housing versus Section 8, so everyone will be under Section 8, is that correct? and all of the units, it will all go under Section 8? So what will happen is, so let's say we close on 11 November 30th, which we're, we, we're really hoping to do. 
for uh, some of our uh, developments. So we closed on November 30th. Right now we receive our money from something that's called you know, 24 CFR, blah, 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 section nine. That's public housing operations subsidy. And you can't do anything with that money but uh, fix and repair and take care and hire people to work at public housing. When we uh, flip the switch on 1130, then all of a sudden that money will come out of section eight pot of money. Nobody will go any place, nobody will, you know, come in, nobody will do it. It will just switch, the pot of money will switch. Okay. So we currently have, you know, I know it's based on a dollar amount that the city receives for Section 8. <laughs> so by going to Section 8, so will that increase the dollar amount? I mean, definitely it's going to increase the dollar amount that the city receives for Section 8, I guess. Because don't we currently have a set of amount that we receive for Section 8? I, one of the meetings that you... Well, it's based on the, it's the unit. It's based on the unit count. Okay. And then occupancy. So that's two, okay. th two important things. It's based on the unit count and occupancy. But then we also have Section 8, too, for individuals that don't wish to live in these areas. They're maybe out, like, in you know, homes it, in the communities. Yeah, yeah, and so, so was that an addition? I, I guess I'm just trying to figure out how much Section 8, if this is all going Section 8, then we also have the, yes, the so outside we have of a, the housing authority. Yes, ma'am. We have an allocated amount that we receive now uh, from the federal government. I think it's around $6 million bucks or something like that. Based on um, the average rent in this area, that covers 1,192 regular vouchers and 200 veteran vouchers, so 1,392. So, but now everybody's going to go. Everyone that's living in the housing authority currently will also go under Section 82. Yeah. So the unit they're in. So let's say they're unit. They're in Unit 101. That unit becomes what's called a project-based voucher. It's not that that voucher is, we send it out into the community or it's, you know, anything like that. It stays with that unit. Uh, that voucher stays with Willow House. If it's at Willow House 101, that's where it stays. Okay. I'm confused. So there, there's no additional Section 8 then? Because you said you have like a $6 million basically for Section 8. Well, so that will cover all of the units and the individuals that are not living in the units? It's, it's additional Section 8 in this, in this way. So we have $6 million over there right now for our 1392, mm -hmm. right? So if we have $10 million that currently cover my public housing subsidies, all of a sudden that $10 million won't be public housing, it will be Section 8 just attached to those buildings. So we'll have around 16 million then in Section 8 in the city of North Rock. Is that correct? E essentially, yes. Yes. Thank you. Questions? Ms. Ro Ms. White? Um, I know that uh, at the last planning commission meeting you were there and there was a uh, zoning, the uh, zoning was changed, was asked to be changed from a C1 to R4. Can you comment on that, please? Yes, ma'am. Um, so as we moved, moved our uh, plans through zoning, we've run across a few things that uh, had, where the city had changed their zoning. And so we were told that it was best that we change our zoning to match what it had changed to. So, so at Willow House, we understand that it was zoned for, the land was zoned for public use, and um, then it also was a C1 zoning. We were told uh, by planning that it needed to be zoned, rezoned to multifamily, which it is, it's multifamily. So we didn't go in to change anything. We didn't know we were gonna have to change anything, but we were advised to change it and uh, the scenario was used. If it burned down, you really can't go back and build a multifamily in there if it burned down because right now it's zoned as C1. Okay, the fact that it will be an R4, will that change anything for, for who's coming into Willow House? Is this no, it's, no, what's important to us is that it's multifamily. Right. But that's what's important to us. But no, it does not change who's coming in. It's just paperwork, basically. Right. Ms. Ross. I know that this is more than what, what we were going to get into, but I know at uh, Eastgate, uh, you know, y'all were wanting to block off Vine Street. That is still currently in the plans to stay open, or is it in the plans to close Vine Street? Uh, we, as soon as you, we left that meeting, we changed those plans. Okay, yeah. all right, because I've never actually no, heard. No, you know, ma'am, as soon as we left that meeting, we changed those plans. So Vine Street stays open? Absolutely. Thank you. 
Thank you. Mr. Hyde. According to this list, the way I see it, Silver City is the only one that's going to be completely demolished. Is that correct? They're already doing it. Hemlock will be eventually as well. It's not listed on there because we won't, yeah, we won't deal with it until uh, early next year. But yes, on this list, Silver City is the only one to be okay. demolished. Any, any of the people living in any of these uh, homes, houses are going to be displaced during construction or what are we going to do with them? So Silver City is already, everyone is gone. And what we did for those folk who chose to uh, hang around while we assisted with providing housing, they received, uh, they had the option to either go to some of our other developments or they had the option to take a voucher and go wherever they wanted, go, wanted to go. Same thing with the folk that are currently in the senior um, towers. They can take a voucher right now. They call them tenant protection vouchers. The uh, federal government does not allow us to displace those individuals. Mr. Witcher. Okay. <clears throat> Ms. Snow, are any of your board members with you tonight so, yes. we, can, so we can recognize them? Uh, my resident commissioner is here. Mr. Raymond Wells is in the back. Okay. And uh, that's, that's it, okay. All right. Okay. Well, Raymond, thank you for thank serving you. on that board. We appreciate it. I have one more question, right. too. And I think you mentioned this at one of the meetings, too, that we had one of the neighborhood groups. So it's you've, the ones that are living there now, currently, you've given them vouchers. So they've moved out of any uh, the, the housing authorities, properties, correct? For the senior towers or right. the or Silver City? Which it's one? Both. both yes. Silver, City. Silver City is gone. Uh, senior towers, some of them. We don't expect massive, you know, okay. exodus for there, but yes. So will they move back into that? I know that they have they have first preference to move back, mm -hmm. but if they don't want to move back, then they can stay out without they with their go. vouchers. So how many additional vouchers then are the ones you don't know because you don't know if they're going to move back or not, correct? So if they take a tenant protection voucher and go, uh -huh. we still have a voucher associated with that unit okay. that they left. We, we still have a voucher associated with that unit. Okay. So, okay. okay. One more. One more. Oh. Um, when the people move out of Willow House or those who choose to move out, if they um, aren't 65 or 62, whatever the requirement is, when it's time for the, re the renovations done and time for people to come back in, will they... Uh, be taken in regardless of their age over the age, the uh, elderly people that would get a preference otherwise? The rule is, well. yes, the rule is if you left so we could modernize, you can come back. Yes. Okay. The uh, What's the new name of Campus Towers going to be? What is Campus Towers? Who? Oh, Cedar Gardens. Sorry. Cedar Gardens, yeah. okay. Okay, Linda, thank you so much for your time. We do appreciate it. Um, okay, let's go into uh, new business. New business. R18-208, uh, Council Member Robinson and Taylor. Please call it. A resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a program management and lease renewal agreement with Dixie Edition Community Development Corporation. Move to suspend all readings. It's a resolution, so do how about a motion? <laughs> so move. Thank and a second? Second. On the motion. Question? Yes, I have a question, as usual. In this agreement, it says, you know, that the, the Dixie uh, CC is responsible for uh, liability, uh, for public liability, any insurance, and then their content insurance. Who in the city keeps record of that is that in commerce that handles that keeping the records of who has their insurance up and all that I'm just curious I mean I don't know that we care uh, it's really for their own benefit if they want insurance on their association okay it just says in the contract that they're required to have it so I didn't know but we aren't required to have a, a copy no uh, it's a requirement of the lease um, it's um, the same requirement that was in the previous lease that they had that has expired as far as the contents I guess we don't really care if they have insurance on their contents as far as on the actual structure since the building is owned by us in case there's any right. damage to the property that there would be insurance to cover any damage but the public liability insurance was 
I don't know what that is. <coughs> Under the insurance and indemnity number three. That was copied and pasted from the previous agreement, Council Member Ross. <coughs> um, um, and I think that that's something that as long as they had the insurance on the premises, that we could strike that provision about the public liability insurance. I just had um, kept that same okay. provision from the previous lease. You want to amend that out? I, I don't have a problem with it. I mean, I don't, you know, I mean, I don't know. We, we what don't. do you want it to say? I think that we could just, if you all wanted to, um, um, strike that one provision about maintaining public liability insurance. Okay. Um, well, and as long as they kept the insurance on the premises the in case there's damage to the um, property that's owned by the city. The well, the insurance for well that. you know what, actually the indemnity may be just that, that they waive, they, that the city, they realize the city will not be liable, so. Right. And, and if there is any liability um, for any injuries or um, any claims that are made because of um, their um, use of the premises right, and the conduct of their programs, right. that that's going to be their responsibility and not the city's. Okay. So it so would be the in their in interest to have public liability insurance. Okay. No, no. Th so this is correct then, because okay. that's what it says yeah. here. Is basically that they're but responsible. But we're not. We're not, we're not requiring them to have. That we're now. not requiring no. them to right. have public liability okay. insurance. Right. But just have, just to let them know that they they are liable for whatever happens on yes. that property. Yes. But but they're in, for contents or anything. They are liable for insurance on that. Yes. Okay. Do we have insurance on the building? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, yes. One three, it does say maintain public liability insurance on the lease premises. So under number three, we need to strike that last one then if we don't want to have that. Maintain public liability insurance on the lease property. So we might want to strike that if we're not going to require them to have it. Okay. Well, and um, That's a legal question. I don't know. It, it's okay to strike that as long as they maintain the insurance on the property that is owned and by the, the city. And the contents that are owned by it, the city. But they don't have insurance on the oh, property. They don't have any insurance on the we property. We have insurance on the property. Oh. Um, in the previous lease, it was my understanding that provision was um, in the previous lease. It was my understanding it was their responsibility to have the insurance on the property. So I did not, um, it was not within my knowledge that we insured that building. Okay. I'll strike that. Okay. There. Yeah. Just as an example, the North Little Rock Women's Club maintains insurance on that property. On the building? Yes. I want to check on that. We must. We have it doubled insured because I think we cover all buildings, and um, so we'll check on that. Karen. So what are we going to do tonight on Dixie? Um, on this, in the resolution, um, it says that the mayor and city clerk are authorized to enter into the lease agreement substantially similar to Exhibit A. I think that um, if we determine that the city does in fact have insurance on the building, that we can strike that provision, that the contract and lease agreement will still be substantially similar. If we find out we don't have insurance, we leave it in. I, I just wanted to make sure so that the they city, knew there was So the city, we will maintain insurance on the building and they will maintain insurance or be responsible for their contents. Absolutely, yes ma'am. Okay, that's, that's, that's what I want. Okay. Okay, do we need to amend anything or is it say, does it say that? Um, if we're relatively sure that the city um, has insurance on that building, we could go ahead and amend it now to um, delete the uh, requirement for insurance and just keep the provision that they're responsible for um, their own contents and that they're also liable for any injuries that um, occur by participants or volunteers and, and keep that language in. That'll work for me. Did you get any of that? I'm gonna need that. Oh, well, <laughs> I'll get it from the recording. <laughs> Normally though, you do amend the exhibit on the floor. 
All right. Well, Give me a half a second and okay. let me write it down. All right, let's, so hold, it let's hold this right. and go on to the next one. Okay. And we'll come back to that one. Okay, okay go to 209. R18-209, Mayor Smith. Please call it. A resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to purchase real property located at 1206 West 4th Street and 219 Parker Street in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas. Maybe for funds. Second. Yeah. Second. On the motion. Ross. Yes. White. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Robinson. Yes. Baxter. Yes. Harris. Yes. Height. Yes. Witcher. Yes. R18-210. Hold it, please. R18211, Mayor Smith. Please call it. A resolution declaring certain buildings, houses, and other structures located at 2104 West 17th Street in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, to constitute a public nuisance and condemning said structures, providing a period of time for property owner to abate said nuisance. Move for adoption. Second. Call a public hearing. Anyone here to speak on 2104 West Short, 17th Street? Yes, sir. Come to the microphone. Please and identify yourself. I'm Paul Atkinson. I own the house. Okay. Uh, it's been condemned, and, and um, we are agreeing to condemn it and tear it down. And you've had plenty of opportunity to bring it up to code or remodel it, and you haven't. So what say you? Well, it happened June or July, whatever day it was. And since that time, I've been had an operation and been taking chemo, and I haven't felt like doing any work. And I'm still actively taking it till the end of the year. And what I'm trying to do right now is sell it because it's not damaged that bad. You know, it's easily fixable up, and so it's what I'm trying to do is sell it right now. Well, let me let me tell you what your option is. Um, you've got, from tonight, if this passes, you've got 30 days to come up with a plan and um, come to our city attorney's office and put up a bond that you are going to follow through with your plan. And... Um, so that's your only option right now, okay? Yeah. Now, if you were to sell it uh, with it being condemned, uh, then that creates another issue that the person that is buying it from you would have to come in and put up that bond within the next 30 days. So you've got 30 days to, to try to make something happen one way or another. Cool. And our city attorneys will be more than happy to guide you through that uh, and the bond that you would have to put up. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Good luck right. to you. Uh, anyone else here to speak on 2104 West Short 17th Street? Seeing none, close the public hearing on the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. Witcher? Yes. R18-212, Mayor Smith? Please call it. A resolution approving the uh, and certifying amounts of liens to be filed with the Pulaski County Tax Collector against certain real properties in the city of North Little Rock, Arkansas, as a result of grass cutting expenses and abatement of other nuisances. Motion. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Call the public hearing. Anyone here to speak on grass cutting expenses and abatement of other nuisances? Seeing none, close the public hearing on the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. Witcher? Yes. Are you ready, Counselor? I'm ready. Well, Debbie is waiting to to sponsor your amendment. So and I just want to say something. I, I just wanted to make sure that that, that we weren't both playing, paying insurance or whatever, that they uh, were uh, duplicating. Good point. It. Good point. Yes. We'll make sure. Good point. All right. The <coughs> amendment that I would suggest is on paragraph three. Um, delete the first paragraph and substitute it with the language. The city <coughs> will not be responsible for any loss or damage. Uh, to contents um, owned by Dixie CDC located uh, within or upon the property. And leave the rest <coughs> of it the same. So take and out that maintain public liability insurance? Yes. And, and then keep the... Um, but did you leave it that it's, it's, it's mandatory that they have public liability insurance or is it... 
It's their option. It's their option. So I took that out because I understood that that was what Ms. Robinson um, wanted to do. Is that part of the that. amendment? Yes, it takes out that whole first paragraph. Okay. All right, we got um, Ms. Ross made the amendment. How about a second? Second. Any questions or comments? Yes, ma'am. So they are covered and we are covered, correct? That's why I just want to make sure I don't want any liability coming back as on far them. As far as I know, we have insurance and I want on the building. Them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if anything happens inside the building or if there is anybody that wants to sue them because of something they did, it's their baby. But you we're know. not requiring them to have that insurance. We're not requiring it. But they can if they want to. They can if they want to. Okay. That works for me. Do we have a second? Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Hyde? Yes. Witcher? Yes. Need a motion to adopt as amended? So moved. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Hyde? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Let's go to ordinances. 01883, council members Robinson and Taylor. You calling it? Please call it. An ordinance accepting the annexation of property to the city of North Little Rock, uh, Municipal Property Owners Multipurpose Improvement District Number 25, North Bluffs Project, declaring an emergency. First reading. Move to suspend the reading. Second. On the motion to suspend. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Motion? So move. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. And on the emergency? <clears throat> Go ahead. Uh, Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. 01884, Council Members Taylor and Robinson. Please call it. An ordinance accepting the annexation of property to the City of North Little Rock Municipal Property Owners Multipurpose Improvement District Number 34, North Bluffs Recreation District, declaring an emergency. Move to suspend the readings. Second. Ross? Motion. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. Witcher? Yes. Motion? So move. Second. On the motion. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. Witcher? Yes. On the emergency? Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Mayor? Yes. Can I just ask a question? Sure. This, I mean, why did we have to have two separate pieces of legislation to do that? I'm assuming it was two different pieces of property. Two parcels. It's two different parcels. It's two so. separate improvement districts. Um, <clears throat> I think that they're bringing the same parcels into it, but since there's two separate improvement districts, we need to do it in separate legislation. Yeah, one's improvement district 25, the other one's improvement district 34. Okay. Okay, uh, let's go to public comment. Let's see what we got here. Um, Jimmy Yard. Good evening. A big data boy reward for garbage pickup on the day they've come around with the boom truck. And the original driver has done it also they could not get it all up with the boom, so they get out of the truck, take a shovel, and make sure it all gets on there. That doesn't happen with all the drivers, but uh, truck number 30, and I don't remember our regular truck number, but they always do an excellent job when they don't get it all on the truck. Next problem, I feel is a problem. My understanding from, I think, two council members Code is not supposed to go in the backyard snooping around. That's my understanding. We've tried to get them to get some real tall grass cut, and Code was given permission to go back there. 
and he comes back and tells the woman they can't go in the backyard to look or do anything. Maybe I need to bring one of the snakes that come out of the backyard behind her down here and show it to y'all. I'm sure y'all would love that. But you got a code officer It went in the backyard, went in a private storage building. And of course, the house is in probate. They didn't notify anybody by letter as they did my cousin uh, about eight years ago. Didn't even put enough postage on it. I can't ask you questions, but I sure wonder, can code go in the backyard? Or maybe some of your council members could answer that or help me out a little bit. I've been told by council members that they can't go in the backyard. And then one more. Down in Levy at 47th and Camp, they have a vehicle that's been up on a tire rim for over two months, and they don't seem to want to do anything about it. I understand he's only got permits to work on tires inside a deal, and they got a rim holding one up. Not asking any questions, I'm just wondering. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Brenda Hampton. Good evening, Mayor Smith and uh, the rest of the council members. I'm just uh, concerned. I was listening to the comments made by Ms. Snow about the renovation of the Willow House facility. And um, I'm concerned about the displacement of the disabled and the elderly that are in that building. I understand that if they don't want to come back to the building, that uh, since there is a voucher still tied to that particular unit that's in place, then the next criteria will be uh, allowed to go in there. As a homeowner that's lived there at the wake of the Phil uh, Willow House for the last 50 years, my question is, does this mean that since it's gonna be connected to section eight, that families with children will be allowed to, to reside in this building? It will still be classified as senior elderly building. All right, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Henderson. My dancing partner. <laughs> Ms. Smith and Alderman. I'm Juanita Henderson, Military Heights uh, Organization. We have had problems with the Willow House. The Willow House, as you remember, was designed for senior citizens only. And that was 55 and above. And later on, they decided, uh, as Ms. Snow said, the uh, government said that they could put in handicapped people. Once they did that, as far as I know, the age did not make any difference whatsoever. And so we began to have, I don't know if you would call them family members or what, but we began to have a lot of problems. And I don't know if you read in the newspaper, they were growing marijuana in the bathtub. Policemen had to come out for fighting. There was a lot of traffic in the area. Uh, some began to uh, have burglaries in the home. And to us, being a quiet neighborhood, a family-oriented neighborhood, we were not used to that. We have asked Ms. Snow if they could not turn the Willow House back to senior citizens only. This is what our desire is. And we find that with this new program, family members. One thing I would like to ask, uh, we're in a C1 zone, which is residential. And uh, she says that they have to change it to four, zone four, apartments and multifamily dwelling. Well, if that's the case, uh, to make it a four, a 
family dwelling do they have to do extra construction? Senior citizens only had like uh, possibly one bedroom, bath, and a kitchen. But for a family, you're gonna need more than that. So in order for it to really be a family with children, will they have to do extra construction? I, I think from my understanding is that the changes that are being made right now are 10 times better than what they are today. So uh, you know, you've got uh, elderly preference, uh, which you didn't have before. Um, and it's a, it's a federal law, it's not city law. We have absolutely no control. And, uh, but I think that the changes that uh, Ms. Snow and her commission have made are, are a lot better for you and for, you, for the neighborhood around there because that senior preference is there and that's, that's gonna help and solve a lot of problems. You know, the zoning was just paperwork. You know, I mean, it, it was R4. Even though it had a C, C1 on it, it was really an R4 and it has been for 50 years, so. So they consider that apartments? Sure. They also consider that family dwelling? Sure. I mean, if, if, if my wife and I live there, we're a family. We could live there, see? But the, as far as having a bunch of children and, and a bunch of young 20-something-year-olds, you're not going to have that. Okay, well, a bus, a school bus stops in front of the building, and we've seen children come out of the building to get on the bus. Is that possible, Blenheim? Yeah, we'll look into that. We'll look into that. But I don't think it's possible unless it was a, a grandmother that had a kid overnight or something. But, uh, you know. Okay, but that's not permitted, right? I don't think so. I don't think so. Is that, that's not permitted, is it? Come to the microphone. Okay, okay you mentioned that um, the changes that will be made would be really good for our neighborhood. In what way? Well, you've got senior preference now, which you didn't before. It was, that's what they started with, seniors only. Well, they changed that law in the 90s. And when they built that building back in the 50s or 60s, whenever they built it, it was senior housing. Right. They changed it in the 90s. And when I say they, I'm talking about Washington, D.C., not... So I have to go to Washington. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with you. We'll go with you. Yeah, we'll go I'm with you. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Because, uh, like I said earlier, our neighborhood has really been family oriented. And it's a very small neighborhood. And I've been in that neighborhood 50 years. I shouldn't have to worry about drugs, crime, a lot of uh, automobiles up and down the neighborhood. I shouldn't have to go through that. And because the government says this is family, this is, these are apartments, this is Section 8, and she mentioned it's not going to be Section 8 anymore. It's going to be something like 9, whatever that means. I shouldn't have to go through that. My property will go down. If housing like that is in the neighborhood, it's difficult to sell if you have to sell. And if you do have to sell, the price is going to be so low. And again, we shouldn't have to go through that. We work hard to get where we are. We work hard to get the type of housing. We work hard to get in a neighborhood like that. So. We need something to be done about that. We don't want, and if it's necessary, we will go to Washington. But we do not want that type of housing in our neighborhood. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Citizen Linda Robinson.
Good evening, everybody. Early voting started today from 10 o'clock to 6 o'clock, so I was there at 9 o'clock, and uh, it's been a long day for me. But anyway, I stand before you today as Council Member Linda Robinson. First of all, I appreciate the opportunity that the people of Ward 2 have given me to serve as their council member. I have sponsored numerous legislations that have benefited uh, the residents of Ward 2 and citywide. I have welcomed numerous businesses to Ward 2. I have been a strong advocate for the residents of Ward 2 as well as the businesses of Ward 2 and the citizens of North Little Rock. I am committed to this city and to our ward. I want to continue to serve. I support our police and fire department. As a matter of fact, I have been endorsed by uh, local firefighters here in North Little Rock, Local 35. I have been endorsed by them, and I really appreciate that endorsement. So I ask for the opportunity to serve the residents of Ward 2 again. I ask for your vote. So I'm on the ballot, the second name on the ballot. I'm listed under Council Member Linda Robinson. So when you go to the poll and you get your ballot, look for my name and vote for me. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Robinson. Any city council members have anything? Ms. Ross? Uh, this Saturday at 10 o'clock is the Dogtown Derby, 800 Main Street. Uh, it's always a fun time. Uh, I believe, well, Chief Davis is sitting there looking back now at Chief Tucker now, because I know the race is on between the two chiefs there. So they will start the race off, and it's going to be a fun time, 10 to uh, noon. I, this is the first time I'm going to miss it. I'm going to be in Dallas at a mayor's conference. So. Uh, represent us well, Chiefs, and uh, uh, I'm, I know y'all will y'all will make us proud, Ms. Robinson. I'd like to announce the first annual sh free shredding recycling event, which will be this Saturday, October 27th, at Shorter College, which is uh, located uh, on Bishop Lindsay and Vine. Uh, it's from 10 o'clock to one o'clock. It does not matter how many papers or documents need to be shredded. They're gonna have a truck there that's going to shred the papers and documents on site. Uh, Saturday, October the 27th from 10 o'clock to 1 p.m. There will be free food and they only ask that you bring two canned goods which they're going to uh, collect the canned goods to give away at Thanksgiving. Thank you. Ms. White? Uh, one more thing. On Sunday, this coming Sunday, October 28th, from 3 to 5 p.m., there's a Levy Trail Halloween event. It's open to the public. Levy Trail Halloween event. Thank you very much. I passed out. Um, uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Drug take back Saturday, 10 to 2 at Target on McCain. Thank you very much. They uh, I passed out a uh, program that the Audubon Society is uh, working on. I found it very unique. Um, some of our cities have already started this program. I believe Little Rock has. And so I wanted to see what they look like and, and what their goal was. I really liked what I saw. So I wanted you guys to see it. Uh, be my intent to come back in at the next council meeting and ask for your permission to uh, uh, to do six of these uh, in our city to kind of remind everybody that um, what goes down that stormwater uh, goes into our streams and our rivers. So, yes, sir. I just have a, a, a question to get in. Is Harold here? Is, Harold, is our sanitation guy here tonight? I don't see him. I had a question, and it was because of the recycling uh, uh, that came up. Uh, issues have come up in the last few weeks. I had a resident uh, in my ward call me and want to know if the city still provides services 
to help them get their garbage out on the street on the pickup day. Yeah, we will. We do that. Yeah. Their question was, will waste management do the same? Yes. When we, the seven years ago on the contract, that was part of the deal. They, they agreed to do that, that they would, so, come, they would come to you up if you're carport and you're elderly and you can't get it out or you're handicapped and broke your leg. So will they, they, will come they, get, they come the day before they're going to, or they, or they, does the driver get out of the truck and? With waste management, your guess is as good as mine. I have no idea. Mayor. Mayor. We'll give it our best shot. I'll call them. No. I'll, I'll Absolutely. Them. Have we Thank selected you. a, a, the six locations? No. Yeah. Okay. no. We'll have at least one every ward. Oh, okay. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied. Yeah. Bedtime reading? Yes. The, uh, Karen, you want to say anything about the budget uh, draft that you put out today? Uh, Mayor, I don't know uh, if we've announced our budget hearing for November 13th at 5 p.m. So the reason that you all have your budget documents in front of you is to give you plenty of time to review those. I, of course, um, you can look electronically in BSNA at uh, the budget and all documents attached. Um, you can call me. I'll be happy to take any calls, uh, explain any, you know, answer any questions or explain any of the budget at 5 p.m. on Tuesday, November 13th. I remember we're going, we're not going to, uh, no, November the 12th is Veterans Day, and so we've moved council meeting to the 13th, and we will meet here on at 5 o'clock. Uh, same thing we did last year, and it seemed to work very well. So we'll be here at 5, we'll spend an hour on the budget, and then start the meeting at, uh, at 6. And then if we need to have a further uh, budget hearings, we can. But I encourage you in the next three weeks to spend some time on this when does the and call Karen and uh, uh, let her answer any of your questions, okay? Tuesday. Or call me or call Chief Bradley. I don't know. Yes. When does the Planning Commission meet? The second. They, they meet the same day. They have a very short agenda and they will be out of here by before five o'clock. Okay. Okay. You got a ballpark on that? Okay. Okay. How about a motion? So move. On a motion. Second. Ross? Yes. White? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Baxter? Yes. Harris? Yes. Hyatt? Yes. Witcher? Yes.